that's where Labour is. You're not disagreeing with any of this either. You're, you're, you're saying three households, the bubble, will go along with what the government's proposing, are you? Well, look, the issue is that people have made huge sacrifices. And the question is, and Professor Hayward's remarks are sobering, the question is, are these changes sustainable? Or are we going to face another lockdown in the new year? And I think we've got to really watch the infection rates. We've got to make sure that local areas with uh, very vulnerable populations, like in my constituency, uh, that these changes that allow people to mix don't then mean more deaths sure, and more infection Sure, but I think rates. everyone would, would, would agree that, you know, there's a five-day period and people understand that. But I'm just keen to understand whether Labour is on the same page as the government on this one, because I'm trying to work out if, if, if there's any difference there, because presumably this is being done on the back of what you think is public opinion, and I, I don't know whether public opinion is, is there. Well, the public want our government to keep us safe, and what's happened is that the government has said that they are being guided by the science, and what's happened in the last few months is that we've seen that they haven't. And the question the public will want to know, and those are the questions we are going to be posing to the government, is, uh, is this sustainable, or is this going to lead to high, but, higher but, infection but, rates? But it's fine for Christmas, that's what you're saying. It's well, fine no, for I'm Christmas. not saying, I think my point is that this is going to be quite specific to certain, you know, the, the risk is going to be higher for some groups, in my own constituency, we've seen high death rates among certain communities, for instance. So we really need to look carefully about the impact this, these changes could have. It does seem and real. the government needs to be flexible about that. It does seem extraordinary um, to, to sit next to a, a scientist who's saying that you're about to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory when we are so close to the end and we're all talking about the light at the end of the tunnel and the vaccine and the rollout couldn't be coming quicker. Do, I mean, do you not think why we're doing it for on, on the back of what is presumed to be a demand from the public but that might not even be there? People, when you ask them, say it's more important to get this right and to stop the restrictions longer term more quickly. So you are right that the uh, light at the end of the tunnel is there. This country's bought more vaccines per head than anyone else, so we're in a very, very strong position for next year to get that vaccine rolling out and get back to normal, which is what everyone is is desperate to do but you're right also we've got to get through a difficult winter and again it's a, it's about striking a balance we've just been through a very difficult national lockdown in england very tough measures that have been very very difficult for people and i think that the risk is if you just say right you know christmas is cancelled you're doing it on on zoom people will just ignore it and instead of following a kind of safe version of christmas that the government is proposing and we are at least clear about where we stand um you end up with people just ignoring the rules because you're pushing them too hard and it just breaks so it is a difficult balancing act, and we are doing some very difficult things at the moment, um, okay. or rather, people in this country are doing difficult things, and I think this is a good balance. I don't know where Labour are, but I think, I think we've arrived at roughly the right place. Well, you mentioned difficult balancing acts, and before we get to Christmas, of course, we've got the spending review with the Chancellor tomorrow night. Nick Watt um, said that there's an almighty row brewing in Westminster over this question of foreign aid. Uh, Archbishop Welby, you might have heard, said it was one of the great moral achievements of this country in the last 20 years, and to end that would be to damage themselves. Is your government really going to throw that all away? So I think the big question uh, is how big the hole is that we're going to face after the coronavirus crisis. We know that we're borrowing more than uh, we've ever borrowed before, huge sums of money, and uh, that structural deficit is not going to go away uh, of itself. And we've got commitments to do things like, you know, the 50,000 extra nurses, the 20,000 extra police officers, the huge program that I'm hoping to hear from uh, tomorrow about, you know, getting unemployment down. We've got lots of things we've got to prioritize. Now, I can see the arguments on both sides uh, with overseas aid. It does do a lot of good in the world. It does help a lot of people. And in, in many ways, it's in our own interests. Um, but we also have to balance that against a lot of other priorities that we're facing in a world where, because of the coronavirus, we're going to have a lot less money than we thought we would. We'll have a smaller economy than we thought we would. So I can see, you know, the arguments on both sides, perhaps for a temporary um, uh, slowdown in aid spending that you then uh, bring back up as uh, things recover. But, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. We've got lots of other commitments. We're going to have high unemployment. One of the reasons I came into politics was to get unemployment down. Right. And so the priority for me has got to be spending a lot of money, creating jobs, getting people into work, really helping people who are going to be struggling in this country. Rishnar, well Labour, as this Labour is firmly committed to keeping that um, foreign aid. What happens if the country is on the side that Neil said, though? What happens if people are saying, 
Yeah, we've had an absolutely shocking year and we need things to start at home. And Labour should be the party that puts their needs first at home. Well, look, first of all, this uh, aid commitment is a cross-party commitment that was enshrined in law. Uh, the Conservative government under David Cameron and Theresa May supported it, uh, Labour achievement, but we secured cross-party agreement. And as a result, Britain's reputation in the world is enhanced. We have lifted millions of people out of poverty. And in the middle of a pandemic, to reduce the funding to overseas development and humanitarian responses, when coronavirus has exposed that we are all interdependent we're not going to be able to tackle this virus if we don't help people in the poorest parts of the world to overcome this uh, it, these infection rates then we're going to be locked in in facing this pandemic we also need to make sure that the vaccine is it, the implementation of the vaccine is in the poorest parts of the world as well otherwise uh, we're gonna not be able to tackle this pandemic so to cancel aid uh, or substantially reduced by billions right now. Uh, it's a bad th idea in the first place, but and it diminishes our role in the world. But to do it in the middle of a global pandemic is it's basically this government following Neil, a Trumpian I, I, politics, and it's time that they stopped doing this kind of thing. I'll let you come back on that briefly. I, the thing about this is Britain is one of the biggest spenders on aid in the in the whole world, one of the very few countries that spends as much. And even if we spend a bit less, we will still be one of the biggest spenders. In fact, on, on vaccines, for example, we led the world on Gavi, the global vaccine initiative. We're the biggest contributors to those kind of things. So what if we spend? If we spend a bit less, we'll still be one of the biggest um, contributors to international aid. There's no question of cancelling international aid. It's just a question of choices and priorities. We've got other things we've got to fund, the NHS, getting unemployment down and... It, again, we've so whatever happens this year, it won't be cancelled. That's a pledge, is it, from the government? We will always have an international aid budget. There's oh, no way we're going to just cancel. No. Yeah, yeah. So there's no, you know, we will be spending billions and billions on international aid, even at a difficult time for the country. The question is just exactly how much. Okay. Thank you all very much.